So we're back at this series of frequently asked questions for cannabis growers. These are the things that you would study as part of an undergraduate or even a graduate degree here at Utah State University. I teach a graduate level course in plant nutrition and we have undergraduate courses. So these are principles of plant nutrition for plants. And then we apply these to cannabis. So here's a, how does pH affect nutrient uptake and what's the ideal pH? So let's go to a white screen for this so I can talk about this. First of all, the ideal pH is about six. And just to really quickly review the pH scale, if we put it up here, there's eight, seven, six, five. This is neutral uh, pH. Um, this is probably high school chemistry even. We'd like it to be slightly acid because it makes micronutrients more soluble. That's the biggest reason. If it's alkaline in this direction, th things precipitate as hydroxides, manganese hydroxide, phosphorus starts to precipitate. If it starts to get to five, things come into solution that you would rather not be in solution. So when you get to pH five, one of the most common disorders we see is with MN, manganese, not Mg, that's magnesium. This is a micronutrient, but this element is taken up as if it was an actively taken up nutrient. And especially for cannabis, when the pH creeps down toward five, you, you run the risk of toxicity. They become too available. If you get up towards seven, they're not available enough. So we'll put a big box around that six. Now people go 5.5, 5.8. Those tenths, tenths of a pH unit are just not that critical. For most crops, we would say 5.5 to six is optimal, right in that range. For cannabis, I like to see pHs between 6 and 6.5. I'll put cannabis in here. Now, what's the basis for saying that? You, you, you've studied this in school. They say, wait a minute, this is well known, 5.5 to 6. This slightly higher pH helps to ensure that you're not going to have micronutrient toxicity. Little burned brown leaf edges, dark spots on the leaves, those are toxicities. So a slightly higher pH minimizes the chance of those. And iron, and, and iron's so important, I'm going to put it on here in red. Fe is a critical element, and this is it precipitates as ferric hydroxides, OH. So you get above pH seven and you have yellow plants. You get iron deficiencies. And that's why we like to be acid because iron is more bioavailable at a slightly acid pH. But cannabis is one of the world's record crops for getting iron. We've had pHs above seven and it still gets iron, no problem at all. So that's why I say we, I like to see a slightly higher pH to minimize the chance of micronutrient toxicity and it still gets plenty of iron. So what does pH do to nutrient uptake? And I'm gonna take this away because we're gonna start with a new screen here. Let's take one giant root and just way big of a giant root system over here we have hydrogen over here we have hydroxide the hydroxide the high hydroxide helps to emphasize uptake of other anions sulfate phosphate whereas on the this side it helps to emphasize uptake of uh, calcium, magnesium. Um, so we can shift the uptake of nutrients by pH. 
But the biggest single thing pH does is bring nutrients into solution or help keep them into solution. But if we have an inert media and we're fertilizing with water-soluble nutrients, pH really has a minimal effect. We've had pH failures and the pH goes to four for a half a day before we get it fixed. There's no effect on the plant roots. They can take that if it's, it's as long as they get plenty of nutrition. So there's minimal direct effects on pH on roots. There are indirect effects on plant nutrition and particularly um, solubility of elements. In an inert media though, that's not buffered and pH can fluctuate wildly if we're not paying attention.